myself, but many of you all know me. I'm Victoria Pitt from the NMIT at the University of Hertfordshire. I'm really delighted today because we've got Tim Sheriff with us as our keynote speaker to talk about the project that Tim led over with over sort of 15 schools. In, and he's a head teacher in Westfield Primary School. And I'm absolutely delighted really to, to sort of learn from Tim's work. Um, he is, well, I think. DFE and everything, aren't you, at the moment? So I'm going to hand over to Tim anyway to, to talk us through. Thank you, Tim. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. And the world will forget it here. The world will be <laughs> yeah. um, I've been speaking to people throughout the week about this. It was obviously predicted, and we've had, uh, we've had snow over here up in Wigan, so we've had that nightmare decision to be closed, you know, so it's a lot of today. Uh, yeah, so, um, there's a chair from Head of Westfield in Wigan, which is, uh, there's a chair from in Wigan, which is, 500 children, uh, deprived catchments, uh, and I'm privileged to lead this project. Can I just check about the audience? Do we have, is it a mix, secondary, primary, or is it so? Yeah, it's a mix, okay. Just to say about this particular talk, I've done it many, many times, I've done it up and down the country, uh, and it was part of the DFE live events uh, that happened last year, and um, sort of took it on the road around the country, um, and generally been mixed audiences. So, Despite this being a primary project, any secondary colleagues in the audience, hopefully it will be something uh, you'll take from that today. Because we've had six one colleges, it's been, it's been right across the piece, and the feedback is that you know it can be applied to your your particular setting. Um, for a start, hands up um, if you've already done something about work well in your school. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good okay. because uh, I generally get less less hands up than that. Second question: um, hands up who, who who read the documents about about, about this? Okay. All right. I asked that because one of the things that the departments are very keen on is to see whether the message is getting out in the system. Um, I'll I'll come back to the new Ofsted framework, um, but. There has been a concern that the message hasn't been getting through and sort of across the country and down the country when I've been asking those questions about who's seen this, the answer has often been zero hands. Um, when I say who's done something about it, often zero hands. So that was, that's a lot of real concern for the, for the department. So that they are keen that this message gets out, as is Ofsted. And the, the DFE live events that I've attended, Sean Arthur has been on the platform with me, so you know the message today isn't just sort of about our project, but it's endorsed by Ofsted, endorsed by the department. Okay, so um, just to, as a sort of a way of introduction to this, I first encountered this as a sort of a theme probably about, about three years ago. Um, if we can just set the scene in terms of my school. We, uh, we were looking to appoint um, an English lead and um, a local school to us to be inspected. And it was going back for about eight years, so those of you that are heads, that was the, those were the days where I used to get a lot of applications for jobs, because those days have, those days have gone. Um, so we must have had about 50 people. It was, so 50 applicants, there was, uh, was an English lead, uh, responsibility post, uh, and it was a desirable post. So one, you know, one of the applicants wrote in a letter, uh, just been inspected, HMI led the inspection, and HMI said it was her mark, it was the best marking you could ever see. So of course, you, you know, that, that focuses your attention, you look at that, Anyway, to cut a long story short, we went on to appoint this person. And she came, and she was the English lead, ended up in year six, um, and she was an outstanding teacher. And probably, you know, those of you that are parents, you had to sort of describe what you'd want your child's teacher to be like. She was it. Uh, the classroom was warm, children made great progress. She, you know, she had most of the, most of the things that you'd want from sort of your ideal teacher. But there was a problem. And the problem was that I would walk past her room to leave the building each night. And it didn't matter what time I went, she was there. So whether it was 
half four, five o'clock, six o'clock, no, she was there and I would, it was the last classroom in the corridor and I would, I would, I would look in and she'd be sat at a desk with a pile of books and, I, and we, we played this sort of role play each night. I'd go in and say, look, you need to go home now. And she'd say, I am, I am. In five minutes, five minutes I'll go. I'd say, look, you need to go home. Yeah. I, it, it was always, it was always, yeah, I will, I will be, I will be. Um, and what she was doing was, was the triple marking, was the dialogue, you know, it's got different names, deep marking, triple marking, dialogue marking, and she was having a conversation with, with, with children. Because that's the, the marking style that the HMI had said was the best he'd seen, so of course, she comes to our school, HMI said it, well, it, you know, it must be right, it must be the best thing to do. <coughs> We all do it. But she did it, and, and she would. So she would be writing a comment back to you know all the children in the year six, and quite often they would then write back to her, and then sometimes they children would write back again. So there'd be this conversation going on in the books, and I know it's you know I know, I know we're not the only school that did that. No, I'm used to sort of allow time the next day for children to come in. The first thing they do in the morning is open the books and read what the teacher had written and then they'd respond. Anyway, so this went on for a number of years. Uh, and then they get a knock. I, I'm going back to this in a minute. You, you'll, you'll see the point. Knock on the door one day, and it's, it's this teacher, year six English lead. So I just, just need to say to him that I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving, not just leaving in Westfield, Leave the teaching. So, you know, as a sort of, as any head teacher would do, you just think this is just a nightmare. I need this. And so she said it's not you two. She said it's not the school. She said it's me. She said I just can't stop it. I, I, I just have to do that. And I said to her, I said, well, yeah. every night I say to you, go home. And she said, I know you do. She said, but it's me. I have to do this. And I think one of the things I'll talk about later. One of the things we've found with this project is that you're dealing with people's sort of perceptions of, of what makes a good teacher. And what I would say to people is, if I asked you all now, who was the best teacher in your school, who was the strongest teacher, or I asked your staff, who was the strongest teacher, it'd be interesting to know what they said and why they said it. Is it the person that stays the latest? Are they the best teacher? Is it the ones who who come into the staff room on a Monday and say, I spent all day yesterday preparing this or doing this. So she said, I've just had enough. She said, I've got two boys, married, got a husband, she said, and I just, I've got no life. She said, Tim, when I leave here, whatever time it is, I go home and I carry on. She said, I'm work on a Sunday. I've had enough. And I said, look, it is, you know, I was desperate. Is there anything I can do to, to me? No. And she did. She walked away from the profession. Um, and I see her now. Uh, and she, 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 she's very happy. Uh, she, hasn't, she hasn't returned to teaching. So it made me think, well, hang on a minute. There's, there's something, something in the system. So what happened from that? Um, we, we, uh, we met. It, Wigan is configured primary schools into five consortia, they're led by head teachers, very few people back at Wigan Local Authority in terms of the centre. So heads, heads, so within our consortia, three heads uh, lead the consortia. So we had an annual conference and Mick Walker, who I know Ali knows, who's the, the vice chair of the CIA, uh, was on one of the marking uh, policy groups. We had a conference and I just shared this story about losing this teacher and said, Anybody else experienced this? And it was sort of commonplace that people were, were leaving, not necessarily the older members of staff, the whole range of so people were coming in and leaving. I mean, there was a, a quote recently from Mary Bowster at NEU to say 40% of, of people who come into the profession leave in the first five years. Now that, that is a staggering statistic. Um, and hence we have the you know, the thing earlier this week about the new early career framework where they're trying to, to, to support people in those first five years. But there was a real concern. Um, obviously, a lot of this work came out of the um, survey in 2014. It was the most 
responded to survey that the department had ever done, 40,000 responses from, from teachers, and they said that three areas that people were concerned about in terms of workload were marking, uh, planning, and I always forget the third one, but I'll come back to it. Um, but obviously mark marking was a real concern. So, so we decided that, that we, as a group we, we would look at this. Um, it would be a reflective um, project. And I think the third point here about financial costs. So just at that time the department um, made some money available and they said for, for sort of uh, schools or groups of schools around the country there was some money that you could bid for to support a project into this. So we hadn't, money hadn't entered into this, so we heard of the money, uh, we put a bid in, um, it's okay, and we were all successful. So we were expecting to say, uh, and we were all successful. So we got some nice feedback back from the department to say, we liked, you, we liked your ideas, however, sorry on this occasion, you were not successful and therefore we were not receiving any money. You can tell I'm not bitter, can you, about that? Um, but actually, the departments are happy for me to say this because I think what we went on to prove, it was never about the money. It was not about the money, it was about something that we wanted to do in our schools. Um, we were supported by Three academic heavyweights at the bottom there. We don't need any introduction. Uh, Mick, who I mentioned earlier, uh, used to be a director of the QCD. Tim Oates, who I'm sure doesn't need any, any introduction, uh, led the expert panel of national curriculum and has been the, the go to person in terms of the New Austin framework about curriculum. Uh, and Graham Herbert, who again has worked with the CIA in the past. So our, our bid. We were supported by these, you know, these, these heavyweights. Despite that, we were unsuccessful. But I'll come back to that later. So, just a few words about Wigan, so we can set the context. Primary schools were in five consortia. The secondary schools work as a group. I think about twelve, about twelve secondary schools work together. Um, it's led by heads. Within our within our consortia, seventeen schools started out, fifteen completed it. The two that didn't complete. As what happens in school, there were, you know, there were some staff shortages, there were some serious illnesses. So the, the two schools that didn't complete, it wasn't because they didn't want to, it was just that, you know, as we all know, things happen. In terms of the, the, the area we cover, uh, my, my school is the most deprived in Wigan, and therefore the most deprived within our consortia. But a couple of miles up the road, uh, we have areas of affluence. So a real cross section in terms of. Of, 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 of catchments, and that was helpful because obviously we're dealing with different different attitudes from parents. One of the one of the heads, probably the most affluent school in the area, was was very concerned about what his parents would think because he's sitting there saying, "I can just hear them now, thirty eight weeks holiday, and now you don't want to mark a book. You can sort of just hear the parents before they started." Um, so I'll come back to that. Again, a mix, a cross-section in terms of Ofsted, probably about six or seven schools are outstanding. Probably a similar number are good, and a couple of the categories, so a cross-section there. Um, we've also, in terms of academy, there's probably two or three academies, the rest are maintained. Uh, some some, some uh, Catholic schools, some serious schools, so a real cross-section. And I think one of the key things from the project was that we've worked together before, so there's nothing special about what we do. I don't know how we don't know how this area is organised in primary schools, but you know we do all those things. We do arts festivals, we do music festivals, we do all that sort of sports of things together. But I think one of the key things was that there's already a build up of trust. Because when we got into this, it was it was probably one of the few times in my career where you were sort of bearing sparing the soul, so it's quite easy to go along and take part in a music festival or a sports festival. Some of the stuff that we talked about here was, was sort of really deep in terms of what you do in your school. Um, so, the number of you said you've seen this document, uh, DFE document, quite, you know, quite simple, quite uh, concise, and the three key words, and I might test you at the end to see whether you remember them or you may already know them, 
within the report, and these are the key words for us, and I, I, I was saying um, to Vicky earlier that we've sort of taken these words and we still use them now in other areas of school. Um, I was invited on last week to a DfE meeting about you, you like this senior leader work, workload. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? So I was invited to a, to a meeting about that. Um, and I, I was making the point there that these three words have sort of stayed with us and we are constantly finding ourselves saying, saying well, is it? Is that, really, is that really meaningful? Is, is it worth doing? Is it worth spending time on? And if it's not, we need to stop it. So, the three key words, meaningful, manageable, motivating. And if your marketing doesn't, doesn't, if that doesn't fit in with your marketing, you probably need to start thinking about, well, can we do something different? So we, what we decided to do as a group, we would sort of self-assess our, our own marketing policies they're not marketing policies anymore, but at that time they were, um, against those three words. We then said so we would establish some features of good practice, um, and those three key words were, were really important. The, what, so this is what we did. So we had a meeting, and the first slide, that photograph of the, of the group, that was in my school on, on one of the first days. And what we did, we literally went around the room and said, right, just describe what it is you do in your school around market. And we all did, and there were people being really honest and saying, well, well we do this, and we use the purple pen of progress, and we use the green pen of growth, and, and we do triple marking, but we're not quite sure why we do it. Uh, it sort of builds up, and when we went back to our triple, we did it because a HMI had said in another school that had gone really well, that person came to our school and we thought, well, it's a good thing, we're all doing it. We didn't really question and we thought, well, the children are involved with the learning, it's got to be good, it's got to be good, but the evidence isn't there. So the group found that there's no evidence anywhere that says that that dialogic marking, that triple marking, is effective. Now I always think back to my teacher and I thought, is she... A she heard me say that. Because that was that was ingrained in her practice. And one of the things that if you're going to do this, and maybe you've done it already, is that you're dealing with people's perceptions of what makes a good teacher. And actually, one of the challenges has been trying to convince some people to let go. And some of the schools, that's been the issue where the heads have been saying, look, you don't need to do that. Stop doing that. And stuff and say, to do. One school said for the project we're going to ban anybody leaving the building with a book. I, when I say that, I see some heads sort of start to twitch, like, Oof. you know, it just doesn't sit right. Um, but staff are saying, but I want to take books in. So for this project, you're not, <coughs> you're not to leave the building with a book. So, um, as I say, it, it was about looking at what, what people did. A lead was identified. People chose different things. Some people looked at math. Some people looked at marketing in general. Some people looked at key stage one. Some people looked at key stage two. A whole range of things. Um, and, and the techniques that people used, they interviewed the staff. They, in our school, so we looked at extended writing. Why? Because extended writing takes the longest time to mark. So I interviewed the staff about it. I literally, I said to them, time, how long it's, so it's not particularly scientific, but time, how long it takes you to mark a set of books next to the writing at the start. We spoke, we spoke to pupils. Now, we'd never, ever spoken to pupils before about what they thought about the market. And it was fascinating. The head of the school in the affluent area started his project with a conversation with the school council. He opened it out with, well, what do you think of our market? Not sure what they'd say, and they absolutely went for it. They, they didn't like it. They didn't, they didn't like all the pen. They didn't like all the marks. They didn't like coming back the next day, or starting a day with what had gone on the day before. So they had a lot to say. So most schools use that. They interviewed, they interviewed um, children. 
interviewing staff, uh, and then they did the same at the end. Um, and then they tried something different, and then we wrote it up, and, and the, the, the project ended up being quite a, a weighty document, and, and I'll go on later to talk about it. It went into the teacher toolkit, which I'm sure, I'm not going to ask how many people have read that, but that's obviously, I think it's had about 80 or 1,000 downloads, the department was saying, the teacher toolkit, of which that's being fined our report. Okay, so I need to say that not everything that we did prior to this was, was poor or, or, or wrong. And one of the things was that everything's well intended. So I'll just draw your attention to the, the word they in bold. Um, so as we were going around, people were saying what they were going to do and what schools were saying, well, you know, we're not going to take a book home. Or some schools were saying, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do that naturally. Uh, the person that led, not in our, not, not in our particular uh, project, but the person that led the, the marking work group, I've, I've been on platforms with them, and she, they, don't, they, don't, they don't write anything in books. It's all verbal feedback. So I don't, I don't think any school not in our group went that far. Um, but one of the heads is, is a new head. So when people were suggesting things, he was saying, what, what will they think if we don't do that? So we said, well, who is, who is they? When, when, you, when you say, what will they think? Who is they? Now, they is probably often, or often think, they could be parents. So what will parents think when they're parenting and flicking through books and there's not this ream of red pen or green pen or purple pen? They could be local authority. They could be governors. What will governors think? Well, governors think, well, why, why are our staff not doing all the work, all the marking that they used to do? Well, he, he couldn't get away from it, he, he, he was like, what are they, what are they going to think? So, um, and I'll come back to that because it, it's a significant, so, so lots of the things we were doing in school were not for the children's benefit, they were for, for they, for somebody else. And I always make the, the observation about year one teachers that used to write half a page at the bottom of a piece of work and the children can't read it. So, and I've, I've, I've endorsed that, I'm, I'm guilty, of, I'm, I, you know, my year one staff used to do that and then you say to people, well, what, why are you doing that? Why are you writing um, half a page and the children can't read it? And they'd say, it's a record of a conversation I've had with them. Okay. So say, well, why, why do you need to record that, that conversation you've had with them? And they're doing, they're recording it for they, for the thought that I'm going to turn up one day and say, just show me that book. And there's no written, there's no written teacher comments on that book. Or it'll be inspected and the inspector will go, there's no teacher comments on that piece of work. Or what is going on in this school? Um, so, you know, the year one example I think is a good one and, and you know, I'm, hands up, I've been guilty of, of, of endorsing that. And, you know, I, I've seen half a page of teachers comments and I sort of, in the past I walked away and thought, oh that's good, that's really good and that teacher must be really good because so just, just look how conscientious that they've done that. Definitely throughout all the schools there was a, an over-reliance on deep marking, the triple marking. So I think we were all guilty of that because we'd all been led to believe it was good practice um, and things built up in schools, but only in Ofsted. And Sean would say, you know, many Ofsted reports have either praised or been critical of marking and, you know, they've left schools with that issue to look at marking and, and so we all do it and it spreads and it's built up over years and years. So that was everywhere. The triple marking, conversations with pupils was everywhere. Um, lots of targets in books. So well done today. Next time you can do this, this and this. Or Now, again, is that a good use of somebody's time? And the child's saying, well, why, why, are, you, why are you writing down what we're going to be doing tomorrow? Well, we're going to be doing it anyway. What's, what's the point? He times it by 30 over a day. There's a lot of people, a lot of teachers writing things in books that maybe are unnecessary. So that's one of the key words with this. Um, again, another one, we were guilty of it. VF, 
verbal feedback. I won't ask you. We have it. So, you know, part of our policy would work well. If you're actually speaking to children, just make a note. VF. Now, why are we writing VF? Who are we writing VF for? It's not for the child. It's for somebody, again, that's picking that book up. Me, Ofsted, Governor, Local Authority, that on that day, somebody had had a conversation with that child. So VF, it was in our policy, it was in lots of school policies. Um, some comments were vague, so there were lots of generic, well done, good work. Um, and I know Dylan Williams talks about this, that if you give that sort of feedback all the time, it, it, it just loses its effect. And, and some children, if you don't put it, it's like, well, what's wrong with it? So there was lots of, lots of, um, sort of generic feedback. You add up that, you, you add all that together, that equals workload. That equals people walking home at night with trolleys. You think about the companies that produced, made trolleys over the years, it made a fortune people walking out to the car with a trolley full of books. Um, so, the new practice was around, if it doesn't have an impact, don't do it. Um, strong reference to those keywords. And this is, this is the key thing, that what, what school starts to say is that actually, you know, do we all agree firm feedback is the most effective? Yes, we do. Well, how are we going to structure a lesson whereby I can spend time talking to children. So actually, this started out as a marking project, but I always say, it's not. It's not. Because the minute you start creating the time to speak to children, everything changes. Because, you know, you've got to teach in a particular way to allow people time to actually speak to children. Um, so, you know, this has changed practice in all the schools, it wasn't just about whether you market a green or a red pen or a purple pen, or you put a comment or you don't. It's changed practice, uh, and schools have recorded, uh, have reported that over the shoulder marking. So when you go into my school now, you, you will not see staff, TAs, teachers sat down. You won't. You'll see them moving around. And if they're not moving around, they're not doing what we agree to do, which is actually create the opportunity to talk to people, to talk to children. Because you can't do it sat at the front. You can't do it if you glue to a group. So within my school now, and the other schools, there's this movement where my staff are, are constantly engaging. So one of the ways you achieve that clearly is through self and peer assessment, which is not nothing new there, but I think it has to be done well. So you can't just say to the group, well, you go and mark each other's books. It needs training, it, need, it need really needs thinking through. Uh, what schools reported back was that actually saying something there and there is far more effective than getting home, being sat, sort of half asleep, not at your best, and realising that, you know, quite a number of children have, have just not understood. It's actually the moment's gone, it's passed. And what the children said to us is that, you know, that's gone, that's gone. Tomorrow is like a new day. So you get home, you realise they've got it wrong, but the moment's gone. So certainly in, in the moment um, is it, it, critical. So definitely uh, the quality of teaching has improved. And one of my staff, he's quoted in the report, said, what it allows staff to do it's to spend more time thinking about tomorrow, not thinking about yesterday. So one of the things from, from this project, it's, it's not about, because you know, I think some people initially think, oh well, this is just teachers trying to do less. It's not actually, it's not about that. It's teachers spending time doing things that make a difference and not doing things that don't. So not, not taking a trolley books at home, a trolley, a trolley full of books home, spending hours doing it, and then going back and the child going, right. That's not a good use of people's time. Um, so this is, you know, 
I mentioned before, marking policies of God, just as we know with marking that as part of feedback. They've, they've been written within the schools by the staff. I'm not the best person to, to write a marking and feedback policy to the people who are doing it. And I think one of the things with this is when you open it up with staff, and obviously a number of you said that you've done this already, um, it's surprising what comes out. I remember the first meeting we, I led in my own school and I said, just tell me how it feels to be a teacher in this school in terms of marking the workload. And the stories that were coming out, I think that one teacher said, uh, oh, my husband goes mad. He said, every Friday night, I'm asleep by about half a glass of wine, I'm asleep by about half eight. And he comes over and he shakes me on the Come on, come on, it's Friday. We've looked forward to Friday night all week. It's Friday night and you're, you're asleep. Uh, so there's all these stories coming back from people, you know, being honest about, about work and about and how they were feeling. Uh, so, if marketing doesn't advance, don't do it. Uh, quantity should be confused with quality. It gives more time to planning. Um, and we like this phrase at the bottom about deep questioning. So rather than deep marking, think about deep questioning. Okay, returning to they. So, you know, what are they going to think? Well, they turned up in, in some of our schools during the project. So it was a, a leap of faith. It was, it was sort of stepping off a cliff together. So we had two schools inspected during the project. Um, one stayed good, and one went from good to outstanding. And this is a quote from the the one that went to outstanding. Uh, schools marking policy is applied consistently. Teachers' feedback is highly effective and leads to, to people to revise and improve their work. Another school had a local authority moderation visit. So again, what, what, are, what are they, what are the local authority going to think about this? They loved it. They loved it. People were able to edit and self-correct without direction. So in terms of confidence, because you know, we were all stepping off this cliff, it gave people, well, well two of them actually uh, you know, thought, it, thought it was a really good idea. And actually, the one about parents that my colleague was really concerned about, no, no issues. No parent has looked at a book of parents evening and said, where's all the marking gone? Because actually what we're able to say to parents is, you may not see as much red pen or green pen or purple pen, but actually, I speak to your child every day. I talk to your child every day about what it is um, they're doing. One of the Manchester conferences of the DfE, there were 120 in the room, and there was a, uh, a secondary head came up to me at the end, and uh, it, was, it was a large room, Midland Hotel, big room, and everybody had gone, and there was just this gentleman stood looking at me, and it was sort of like, a bit like high noon, we were just sort of looking at each other, I thought, I don't know what he's thinking, I don't know what he's going to say, and he walked over to him and he said, uh, he said thanks for that too. I really enjoyed it. He said, Did my school has been all right twice. He said, I'm due a third inspection. So the three strikes and you're out. And he said, he said it, it makes a lot of sense to me. He said, but I just, I just don't know. He said, I'm just not sure whether I can take that step sort of off the cliff. And I said, well, look, you know, far be it from me to advise you what to do. You, you know, you know your school. So when you think about it, whatever you've been doing, you've been all right twice. So, so you know, and I sort of, sort of went away. We've had other secondary colleagues. One, one, um, again, to Manchester one, but this time it was during a session like this. She put her hand up and she said, uh, We've, we've started to look at this in our, in our school, it's a you know, large high school. So what we've done, we, we, we've thought about sort of what, what, what workbook's all about, what's work all about, she said, and it sounds a very simplistic thing to say, but it's quite a deep thing, she said, we see the books now as workbooks, books that you do your work in. And I think we've all, I've certainly been fixated, I think, in terms of presentation, it has to look it's like the King John Bible, and it was not like that, it was, it was something going wrong. Now, when you listen to Tim Oates talk, and, he, and he, he will tell you all about what they're doing in Singapore and all those other jurisdictions, and 
you know, he'll say in some, some, in some countries that a lesson, so you, you or my class, a lesson might be recorded across a wall and, and sort of take the learning through. So I think in this country we've got sort of very conventional approaches to lessons and how we do things. Um, but it was, it, it's, you know, so, so, no, so just to finish, so the secondary head said, we've taken, we've taken a stance now, we are less focused on presentation, it's more about the quality of the work. And she said, it's, it's the quality now we're looking at. Now I find that hard. When I do a book scrutiny, I, I have to really talk to myself and say, stop looking at the date. Stop looking at that underlining. Because I'm sort of programmed to look at that thing. And I'm not saying presentation is not important. However, it's the quality of the work. Um, pupils, I mentioned that earlier. They had a lot to say, so if you're not asking pupils, it might be a good idea to ask them. Um, so a few quotes from pupils. I like doing marking with my group in maths because you get to hear the questions that other people ask. Um, I like the teacher marking in the lesson because it saves me writing out bits the next day. Um, I can just change it there and then. So you know, we have this thing about wait till tomorrow to change it. Um, What's the point of a teacher writing in your book that you haven't used the most efficient method in maths? You can just see a teacher at home and you, you haven't used the most efficient method to say in maths. Uh, is that a good use of their time? Uh, on this one at the end, I like doing marking now with other children. When you get it wrong sometimes, it's nice and you both have, so you both make a mistake. Uh, you can cheer each other on. It. If you get it right, you can high five each other. So they have a lot to say. Yeah, but, and we, we never, in all the years I've been teaching, I've never thought to ask any child about what they thought. But they did, they have a lot to say. Staff, right, okay. All the schools noticed, well not noticed, reported a massive, a massive uh, response from staff. You know, one school said 100% of the staff had, had, had reported that their work had improved. Um, the number of schools said they did 75 to 90% of the marking in the day, therefore we're not taking home trolleys and books. This was us, so, so we recorded our, our the time spent, as I said, so we, we cut ours down 50%, 50% in terms of the time it takes to mark extended writing. And I think the key thing in this is that the staff felt trusted, because actually we say we're a profession, and therefore we trust people. So I think some people think, oh well, you know, this thought that people think teachers are just trying to get out to do more work. Not so. Because if you think about it, you judge their outcomes anyway. So if you choose not to write on a piece of work all year, and your outcomes are fantastic, okay, and you can demonstrate progress, okay, you choose to not write on a piece of work, the outcomes are really poor, that's the discussion. So actually, with this trust that you're giving people, it's not about cutting corners. It's not cutting corners, and some people think it is. It's not. It's just doing. Work. It's working smarter. Um, so lots of feedback from staff to say they felt more trusted. In my school, my staff, because we, we changed things, and I went back and said, right, okay, we've done this now. We've looked at extended writing. Be the big reduction in your workload. What next? And they were like. Start Tim, start, that's enough. Because actually what, what we found in all schools is that staff, because they are professional, and marking is part of, of their job, they're just trying to work smarter. They're not trying, because actually it's, it's just a good part, you know, it's an integral part of good teaching. But they value being asked and being consulted. And if you haven't done it, that first meeting, I was at, Speaking to a group of schools in Bolton, uh, about 13 schools a couple of weeks ago, and none of the schools, none of the schools have done anything at all about workload. And they were sort of anxious about it because of what And I was speaking to another group of, of secondary associates in Liverpool, about 20, 20 high schools in Liverpool, uh, and very few have actually stepped into this area. Um, but it, it's quite sort of liberating because actually when you say to staff, right, tell me what it's like, tell me what we can do together. Staff are not, you know, they are professional, 
they are professional. Um, so we had quotes like, got the Sunday back, it's going to be a good thing. Um, and this one, you know, this was anonymous, I don't know who said it, I don't know which school it came from, but a member of this, of this community said, thank you for giving me my life back. So, we're dealing with something that's very real. The evidence is that people are coming into the profession and saying, do you know what? I don't need this. I'm of an age where when you went into teaching, you just, that was it. You went into teaching and barring something happening, you stayed in teaching. I think the, you know, the evidence is now people are coming into the profession and they are more prepared to say, I'm not putting up with that. That I need, I need, I need life and the evidence is that people are walking away from it. So, one of the concerns was that, what if we do this and standards plummet? What if we do this and behaviour suddenly is atrocious? So what I did, I asked Wigan Local Authority just to crunch the data. So all those 15 schools, um, and it's going back now 16, 17, and basically, you don't need to know all those percentages are increases. So across the 15 schools when the data was crunched for that particular year, results all went up. Now I'm not naive enough to think that it was because of this. I'd like to say that, but I can't claim that. But what we were able to demonstrate for those heads who were thinking, is everything going to crumble? The standards didn't drop. If that was a concern, people were thinking, well, if they don't take the books home, if they don't do this, and they don't do that, and they don't write half a page on the year one book, I think it's going to suddenly start to go wrong. Not so. Not so. Okay, so some of the challenges from the project, people did feel vulnerable. They did wonder and worry about what they were going to think when they came along. Um, you know, what would parents think, what would governors think? Governors, my governors, other, absolutely loved it. I reported it each one in the body meeting how it's going. And why wouldn't they? Because they're getting a happier, uh, you know, the staff in terms of retention, recruitment, you know, you've heard about it this week. Um, it was, it was, it was a, a real win for governors. Um, but I think doing it as a group, and that group in, in Bolton, they're going to do it as a group because you sort of safety in numbers. Um, so the school down the road is doing it as well. And it was as if it's permission. I was talking to Vicky earlier. You know, I've lived as a head over 20 years now. So I've lived through all those different hospital frameworks, all that accountability that we've all lived with. Um, and you've got permission at the moment because actually you've got Sean Harford you've got the department who could, could easily be on this stage now with me saying, do this, do this, it's a, it's a good thing to do. So it's permission. It's really good for professional development because one of the things you have to work out is, so within you know, every school you've got a range. So I've got NQTs, I've got UPS3s. Now what do you say to an NQT about this? What you would say to a UPS3 teacher, um, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, um, we did a book scrutiny uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'll share this with you. So I, you know, I, I'm going around the country doing this, down to the south coast, up and up, you, you name it, DFE, every, did the scrutiny. I couldn't believe it. Year three had reverted back to what we used to do. And I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I thought, I'm going around the country telling people we're doing it and they're not doing it. So, you know, I'm sharing that with you now because actually what happens in schools, you think something's happening actually, but sometimes you go think, well, actually it's not. And what had happened was those teachers had reverted back to, so they were well intended, they were well in, you know, intended, but they'd reverted back to what they used to do. So I had to take these teachers to one side and say, look, I've done this scrutiny gone back to putting comments that actually don't mean anything and they're like 
and I, and I, I just can't. So it's sort of ingrained in people, this is what you do, and this is what being a good teacher. So sure, I'm being honest with you, so, you know, and, and I mean, things to do is generally your school life that you have to keep on with things. And I thought, I was saying, just imagine if audiences knew that, and I thought, well, you know, that's a good thing to share with you. Um, parents, cares, governors, perhaps well, certainly governors, really, really, you know, we're, we're, we're thankful to this. Because in this marketplace we're now, to retain your best teachers, you know, had we done this years ago, that teacher that I lost might still be with me. Uh, so she's a lost the profession. So really, uh, and actually what I would argue, although I couldn't claim those results, those improvements, I think things have improved in my school. I think, I think standards are getting better because when I see the way lessons are organised now, when I see the way staff are deployed now that they weren't before, you know, I think things are improving. Um, but it's one of those things that you do need to keep, you, you know, you, you need to keep on it's building staff's confidence. Because, you know, as I say, people are, people cling on to things that, they, that, that they've held on. So probably the more mature members of staff, maybe if you haven't done it, maybe the ones where you have your your challenges because you're dealing with people's uh, perceptions of what good teaching is. So, findings were that definitely there was merit working together. The DFE report was very helpful. Um, we proved it can be done without any negative impact on standards. It changed the way we teach. It changed the way we teach. It was about thinking about pedagogy. Um, it's about trust, so it's about trusting people and pe the teachers on the other end said they really valued being consulted and being asked as opposed to being told what to do. Um, and actually, I'll come back to the after in a moment. Those three key words, I won't ask you, but hopefully you might remember them. And, and we do, we do refer to them all the time. I'll give you an example. Uh, we'll look, play out the inset for the, sort of the term and the year. And you know, we're looking at oh, there's a lot, a lot of things. And actually, if you were that member of staff on a Tuesday night, and we just be in the bar, this stuff we play every week. And, and I was just looking at staff thinking, I wouldn't want to be here. Because we are, you know, we're just the next thing, the next thing. So the empty said, listen, why don't we, less than whatever it was that period of time, just cancel, not cancel the meetings, but just don't introduce those things, and let's go back to some of the things that we just done and revisit it. I said, do you know what? I was thinking the same thing. It's actually, you know, at the moment, we sort of, we just, you know, new thing, new thing, new thing. And actually, that is a workload thing that and people have done a day's work, and then you're bombarding them with new initiatives. Um, so those three words, I'm, I'm creating that, uh, that culture, really, which, which is critical. Okay. Um, so, we reduced the burden, there was a re dramatic reduction in time, uh, the principles were key. It, was, it had to be managed, so, you know, I say to schools, you can't just say, well, right, next Monday, <coughs> we're going to stop doing this. It was all managed. In our particular case, the SLT did a scrutiny work before the project, we did a scrutiny work after the projects and sort of there was a, a, a check and balance to the process. But it can be done quickly. We did ours in a term. I went back to the staff and said, right, you're telling me this, you're telling me you're spending 50% less time, you're telling me you know you workload. One member of staff came to me and said, um, and he's a musician, he's a great musician, great guitarist, and, you know, just passed me the corridor one day and said, uh, he said, I've started going to a photo now and he's saying nice. I said, oh, great. He said, it's like an open mic and he gets up and do it. And the, convers the conversation was like, is it okay to, for me to go to a, an open mic night on a Wednesday night? I could just sense he was sort of checking out. And I said, that's great, that. Because we have this thing, don't we? You can't have fun on a work night. You can't have fun on a work night. You've got to wait till Friday to have your fun. But Friday, your glass of wine is half drunk and you're, and you're asleep by half eight. Um, so we've had all these stories about people saying, and I, I know now that member staff. One thing we didn't do, and maybe in hindsight would be a good thing to, to have done, 
was to record about staff absence. It's actually what it would have been interesting to have seen about staff absence before the project and after the project. So we didn't do that, so that, that might have been interesting. But it can be done quickly, um, but you need to keep it under review. So, think back to the start. So we were unsuccessful in our bid, um, but Damon Hines at the ASCO conference uh, in March 18 uh, <coughs> mentioned our project. So we were delighted with that. He said, school leaders are increasingly rejecting the practices by that means triple marking um, and developing more effective strategies. And this is a direct quote from his speech. Uh, 15 schools in Wigan who replaced various forms of deep marking <coughs> with verbal feedback instead, leading to a reduction in workload and improvements. <coughs> so, you know, I, I put Damien Hines in the they group. So what will they think? Well, you can see what Damien Hines thought. Um, so, since we did the project, they've produced the toolkit. Who's, hands up, who's looked at the toolkit? Okay, not so many. Well, it's there. It's a bit, you know, so if you think you haven't done this, you might have done this, there's lots of uh, help for you there. And if you go to stage three, what works in schools, you'll find our report. Um, <coughs> unintended consequences. This was interesting. Um, who'd be the child of a teacher? Okay. Who'd be the child of a teacher? So one people said, I think it's nicer uh, for teachers because sometimes my dad is marking books when I go to bed. It's very fair for a teacher to not have to be working at bedtime. <coughs> Those of your parents, just have a think of that for a second. This was fascinating, the next one. Um, before the project, small primary school, two out of ten staff didn't have the school club. After the project, seven didn't have the school club. She hadn't asked them to do it, so she said, why? Why have why we come forward to do this club? They said, because we feel lighter at the end of the day. Okay, unintended consequences. Another school said they are going to use this when they recruit. So in their job adverts now, they put they reference this. So when you're when you're scanning the Times Ed or scanning bulletins, this particular school has got a reference to workload and a reference to marking. <coughs> Not to say that it's easy in that school, but it's just to say that the leadership of that school thought about this. I was saying to Ali before I was sat at an Ofsted meeting in Manchester next to a, a colleague who I didn't know, I'm used to looking at this. I said, oh, he said, yeah, yeah I'm a secondary head in Preston. He said, yeah, he said, he said, he said, he said my daughter just started primary teaching. I said, oh, I think I'll just do it. He said, yeah, he said, she's in an outstanding school um, in Lancashire. Great. So now she gets it on. He said, Well, she likes it. She said, Well, I can get it down. So I didn't have the time with the editor to say, Well, actually. So I didn't go into any of this. I said, Oh, that's interesting. He said, Yeah, he said, The head insists that every piece of work is marked, English work is marked against four different genres. I said, Yeah. He said, That gets it down. And I thought, you just described it there in one. And actually, you know, I said earlier, what can that NQT do? The NQT can't knock on the door and say, do you know what? This workload's not reasonable. That NQT can stay, keep the head down, could change school, or could do what the majority of people have been doing, which is saying, So it's people in this audience that can change this. It's not the NQTs. My friend's son changed career. He went to a, a primary teacher. His dad had been a primary head. They changed from being a counselor to, to being a uh, teacher. He came to our house for son's birthday. I had to see him. I said, oh, so how's it going? And I just thought he'd say, oh, it's great. And he went, a similar story. He went, it's all right. So he said, well, I'm in at this time and staying to this time. And again, I didn't go into this conversation, but I thought, this is what, you know, this is what we're dealing with, really. Um, so, nearly finished now. Just to say that um, 
school, the school is inspected. Uh, they really put down about, uh, about what, what, what written work you find. Um, and they said that scrutiny of books shows less words, minimum wordage, but more impact. And they still did saw their books as a badge of honour, not in terms of pristine teacher comments, but in terms of progress. And that's what it's all about. And I, I have to really tell myself about this, because I do get fixated on presentation. And I'm not saying it's not important, but it's not the be all end all, it's the quality of the work. This quote, uh, the head of the Afghan school, he said at the start of his this project, he was quite, listen, I've spent, I've spent a lot of time on my own project, and it's, it's really good. He had a complete change. He, he, he threw everything up in the air, and it completely changed him. And he said, he said, I was your year six teacher. He said, I was year six teacher. I prided myself on my marking. I prided myself on the things I used to write. He said, um, he said, when I look at what we used to do, it was overcomplicated. The children, they were the, the school council had destroyed him. They really left him thinking, what are we doing? And he completely, and sometimes he comes with me when I do these talks. And he's a big advocate. He changed his whole thinking around this. And they have a very simple, it's now standing school, they have a very simple thing now where they'll just <coughs> put an arrow, an arrow next to something, and it's saying to the child, look at that again. Something there, something there you need to look at again. So rather than you know, telling the child by some comment there and then you've done that wrong, and actually they probably do it wrong the next, in the next lesson. So what you do, you write it again, you keep writing it again. You made the same mistake on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So they have this thing, they've got an arrow, and it means look at it, look at it. So he would, you know, he will say we love it. So, just to finish with Ofsted, you've probably seen the new framework. Um, obviously, it's a draft. It's, it's still in its draft form. If you've gone to the issue of management section, uh, which is what they're describing as being a good grade descriptor, so the leaders engage with their staff and are aware and take account of the main pressures on them. Uh, they are realistic and constructive in the way they manage staff. Okay, so outstanding uh, leaders ensure that a highly effective and meaningful engagement takes place with staff at all levels. Um, when issues are identified in particular about workload, so it's named, uh, they are consistently dealt with and appropriately, sorry, appropriately quickly. Um, so as we know, often, you know, after frameworks can drive, can drive behaviour. Uh, you know, you get getting back in there from Ofsted to say, this is something we need to look at, we need to think about. Um, if you haven't, in my details, uh, if you haven't had a go, if you haven't stepped off the cliff, uh, I'd recommend you do it. And I think you can only benefit from it. Uh, you won't lose things. You'll probably gain better quality conversations. Because the minute you take that thing away about, um, what you've always done, the conversations then start to change. So if I'm going to give verbal feedback to all pupils, I have to change the way I teach. And then, then staff say, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? So the level of conversation, the quality of conversation, really improves. Okay, so. Okay, Vicky, is it okay? I'm happy to take any, any questions. Yeah, okay. or? I thought what might be nice if we could spend a couple of minutes really just talking through one. I mean, we, we saw some hands at the start in terms of whether people are sort yeah. of taking these things on board or not. Um, and really think about opportunities to share practice. Have we addressed this in our school settings? Are we thinking about reducing workload? And the other thing is, if we're not, what do we think the priorities are for us? What things are happening? Um, I know that I come at this very much from an IT perspective because I'm keen that our trainees are picking up sustainable habits, not necessarily learning unworkable practices. But I think everybody in this room sort of it, it starts with us really. So just a couple of minutes to sort of process what Tim said while he's still here. 
and then we can sort of ask a few questions about how how to go about this because clearly what we've got into is somebody who's prepared to take that leap and, and we know maybe that's there's some reticence there. So just a few minutes to make sense really. Thank you.